Let me also bring in some experts on this broadcast to explain to you the magnitude of what we're attempting to do today. Anurag Pandey, founder of AstroCamp India, is also with us. Mr. Pandey, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here on India Today. It's a great day. History in the making, hopefully. Uh, explain to us, really, at this point, when ISRO talks about an automatic landing sequence, how much leeway, how much space is there, really, for scientists to step in and say, look, something's going wrong, we need to intervene, we need to step in and manually control the lander. Is that even possible? This white voice can be increased. Uh, okay, can you please repeat your question once Mr. again? Mr. Pandey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you be louder? Mr. Pandey, I'm not sure if you saw the post of ISRO. Uh, the ISRO post says that the automatic landing sequence command has been sent across for that. Now, we know that the 15 minutes of terror, which everyone's talking about, is going to be an automated procedure. But I want to understand from you how much leeway is there for scientists to kind of step in, for them to kind of ensure a soft uh, landing if there's a need for them to step in. Uh, all right, I got your question. Uh, so basically, look, uh, this time from Chandrayaan 2 to Chandrayaan 3, there are quite significant changes that happened. Uh, okay, once it's coming to the point of scientist, this time we have more control on, on our rover. This time we have more control on our lander. If you know, uh, very, very surprisingly, uh, very surprisingly, the budget is less for uh, Chandrayaan 3, but still there are more components attached. Uh, but yes, definitely, we are not sending Orbiter this time because Orbiter are well placed in Chandrayaan 2. This time we are just sending our lander and the rover, okay, uh, like Vikram uh, and Pragyan, same name has been given again. So this time we have more control. Last time we had a very least control because the, the, the actually what we are calculating on based on the prediction, this time we have more control on our hand. So definitely if situation goes not as per the plan we can still we can still control uh, from our hands actually if the scientists can control the rover can still control the speed can control the temperature so this time uh, as as the chief said this time from isro uh, that uh, any which way we will able to touch down moon uh, even if the engine will not work even if the uh, uh, I, I can say the software glitch happens still we will able to touch down to moon so how this is Okay, interesting, interesting. So, Mr. Pandey telling us that at this point, looks like there have been several uh, systems put in place to ensure that there's no scope for failure, essentially. So, we're all keeping our fingers crossed that that most definitely is the case. How did we reach to this point from the launch, which happened on July 14th? In the last 40 days, we've seen so many historic instrumental moments in Chandrayaan's journey. We decided that as we count down to the landing day, to the culmination of it all, Let's take a look back at the last 40 days journey of Chandrayaan 3 from the ISRO uh, headquarters, from, in fact, the Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota, to the moon, 400,000 miles away. Three, two, one. The clock ticked and at exactly 2.43 p.m. on 22nd July 2019, India took a giant leap to the moon. For the second time, Indian Space Research Organization created history by the successful launch of Chandrayaan 2. L110 engine started. This was India's second mission to the moon after the successful voyage of Chandrayaan in 2008. GSLV MK3 blasted off to space carrying a Land Rover orbiter and a lander with a speed of 11 kilometers per second from the Satish Dhawan Space Research Center in Sri Harikota. It is the beginning of a historical journey of India towards moon and to land at a place near South Pole 
to carry out scientific experiments to explore unexplored. Within minutes, Chandrayaan-2 was successfully placed into the Earth's orbit. As the space vehicle beamed back a perfect report card, Indian so space have, scientists at Mission Control erupted with joy. 7.4 kilometers and the velocity was nearly 140. So the, the Vikram lander has uh, successfully completed the rough braking phase. The mission was expected to take 48 days in total to land its rover Pragyan on the south pole of the moon, roughly on 14th September 2019. But then, on 10th September, days before the final landing on Moon, ISRO announced that it had lost contact with lander Vikram. ISRO scientists were disappointed. It was an emotional moment. Chandrayaan-2 suffered various delays and revisions a decade after the successful maiden Indian Moon mission, Chandrayaan-1. In October 2008, ISRO successfully launched Chandrayaan-1. On 22 October 2008, Chandrayaan mission with a lunar orbiter and impactor was launched using PSLV XL from Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sri Harikota. <laughs> It was a big boost to Indian space exploration history. India researched and developed indigenous technology to explore the moon with Chandrayaan-1. Two weeks after its launch, it was inserted into lunar orbit on 8th November 2008. On 14th November 2008, the moon impact probe separated from the Chandrayaan orbiter and struck the South Pole in a controlled manner. India became the fourth country to place its flag insignia on the moon, near the crater Shackleton. The location of impact was named Jawahar Point. Though Chandrayaan-1 was planned to survey the lunar surface for two years, but after a successful year of transmitting data and detecting presence of lunar water, it stopped communicating on 28 August 2009. 312 days of Chandrayaan-1 was a celebration of ISRO's hard work and indigenous technological advancement in space exploration. Nearly seven years later, NASA with a ground-based radar system relocated Chandrayaan-1 in its lunar orbit. Today, its orbit varies between 150 and 270 kilometers in altitude every two years around the moon. <laughs>